Hey everybody, it's Stan here from Broken Neck Radio, and I'm sitting here with Liam, the lead vocalist of the band Cancer Bats. How are you doing, Liam? I'm doing good. Well, welcome back to Victoria. I know you were here, you know, last time you were here at Lucky Bar was about six years ago. I think it was 2014 was the last time. Uh, oh, last time we played Victoria yeah. was 2019. Was it 2019? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were uh, uh, touring Spark with, uh, we had Wade on guitar. And we played Lucky Bar with uh, Single Mothers and Sharp Tooth. Nice. It was a great show. So, yeah, stoked to be back. Yeah, you guys rage pretty hard. Um, now, you guys have always been known to be a pretty a fairly busy band and how would you describe the sudden feeling because I know you guys had about seven shows booked in March of 2020 when the lockdown hit and anybody who knows in the industry knows that it takes a long time for those shows to be you know to be set up how did that feel when all of a sudden boom they were gone um I mean for us we kind of were already planning on taking 2020 off uh to write new music and to take some downtime spend time with family so for like as far as like biz wise we were already kind of like okay this is going to be like we'd save some money this is going to be some like downtime um having it kind of get extended into 2021 was like unforeseen but again we were you know coming off of tons of touring with spark and everything had been like you know kind of like really busy in 2019 so for us like just having some more time home and i had just moved to halifax so I was excited to kind of like explore Nova Scotia, uh, and we were like, you know what, we're just gonna, you know, work on this record. We're gonna take our time, sort things out. Like as far as um, uh, Scott, you know, wanting to like leave the band, we were like, oh, okay, cool. Like we're kind of not in a rush um, to like figure anything out. So it sort of made for like kind of like the the perfect time for it. Like a blessing in disguise. Yeah, a little bit. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, on a good note, though, Bears, Mayors, Scraps, and Bones 10-year anniversary came out just after the shutdown. How was the reception of that movie? Oh, it was great. Yeah, yeah. People, uh, I mean, it's funny because I think at the time, coming off of Hail Destroyer, uh, it was like an album that really like confused a lot of folks. Like, it's really heavy. Some of the, like, the tops are kind of like a little darker. Um, but then maybe it just took 10 years for, for people to kind of get into it. Cause, uh, yeah, we had tons of people just be like, oh my God, like darkness lives, like trust no one, sleep this away. Like I love this album. And so, yeah, it was really cool to kind of have like a fun, um, kind of like reissue. And then we remastered it for vinyl too, which, which it has a new, has got a new resurgence. Yeah. Like sounds really beefy and, uh, was like a fun excuse to make some, you know, tweaks to the artwork. So yeah, I'm stoked on how it all went down. Um, during the lockdown, you guys were one of the few bands that kept actively communicating on social media with your fans. Um, did you find that this continued connection helped you personally and the band keep it together during this unprecedented time? Uh, yeah, for us, I mean, we definitely like, uh, we, we like run our own socials. So we were like pretty close with that kind of stuff, but it did like, that's what inspired doing the acoustic records. Uh, was just to like entertain folks in a time where we probably wouldn't have been online very much. We were like, oh, like people seem to be enjoying these like acoustic renditions, so we might as well do it as like an EP. And then we ended up doing that live from Winnipeg live stream kind of thing. So yeah, it ended up being like a really fun kind of like project out of the fact that we were just trying to like entertain people stuck in their apartments. Uh... Did you guys feel that the, the lock? Did you guys feel that the lockdown helped you guys more creatively? Um, I mean, we definitely had to change up how we write because we were all in different cities. Uh, but in a lot of ways, it was good because we, you know, figured out how to make better demos and like how to work remotely. So I think we'll probably still keep that same kind of writing style when we like uh, start working on new tunes, especially because we're just again still all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, April 15th saw the, re- the, saw the release of the new album Psychic Jailbreak brilliant title by the way and how'd you guys come up with that title? Uh, it was an idea that I kind of had like banging around in my brain while I was on uh, a motorcycle trip I rode out to have basically the first set of band practice and uh, I was thinking about this idea of like yeah just like kind of shifting your mind having like a psychic jailbreak of just like ideas and then it was funny I must have heard it already but it turns out it's like a real expression in terms of like perspective shifts 
So, yeah, I was just thinking of that, like, we need a psychic jailbreak of our minds. <laughs> I love the artwork. and Who who did the artwork, and how did you guys come up with that? Oh, I did the artwork. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, uh, I've i always kind of, like, been, you know, kind of, like, teamed up with our old bass player, Andrew, uh, who runs a graphic design company called Double Knot. And he and I would kind of, like, collaborate on a lot of the ideas, and I'd send through a lot of, like, oh this is what I'm thinking, like, you know, lyrically or, like, inspiration-wise. So we would always kind of, like, talk a lot about the artwork. And then this time around, I was like, well, maybe since I've been doing so much art with, like, my clothing brand, like, Treadwell, like, maybe I can just take on doing all the artwork and kind of, like, step up to the plate. Um, And in doing that, I was just like, oh, this is actually, like, really fun and a cool way for me to kind of, like, also maybe like explain some of the ideas and themes like visually as well as like you know lyrically so yeah i, I kind of like really embrace the whole uh the whole art work side of it yeah so we'll see you doing more of them for upcoming I, album yeah i mean i would love to i definitely love to keep working on cancer bad stuff maybe design some merch but i'm stoked to maybe even try and do it for some other artists and like when we toured with wilhelm scream uh, they were like really loving our like backdrop that I designed and I was like oh man if you guys ever want like I'll make some shirts so yeah hopefully I can make some like fun band merch for some other people too um, you, mentioned, you mentioned earlier about uh, your the writing process during um, the lockdown and you're going to keep some of that uh, process for upcoming albums um, with the recording process did that change much during, during uh, the lockdown are you going to keep some of that uh, I mean, for us, we definitely still go back to recording, like, live off the floor. So this time around, instead of Jay being on bass, he was just on guitar. Uh, so I think we'll always end up doing that, the, like, live aspect of us recording. One, it's faster, so it definitely, like, kind of speeds things up and captures a lot of that energy from the get-go. So then when you're doing all the, like, doubles, you're doubling to, like, live energy mm-hmm. instead of, like, a click track or yeah. something that's a little stiffer. So we'll probably always keep that uh, now that we're, like, kind of, like, good enough at, like, our instruments <laughs> so we can actually pull it off, yeah. Well, your current tour that you guys are on, you guys are about halfway, and it looks like halfway through it, and it looks like you've got almost more than half sold out. Um, how has the tour been going, and are you really feeling that the post-lockdown rages at the show, you know, with no moshing for two years, for example? Yeah, I mean, the, the response has been huge. Like, uh, tons of the shows are sold out, or, like, very close to, you know? So it just, yeah, it kind of feels like everyone was excited for some heavy shows. I think the only other kind of heavy thing that's happened has been, like, Slipknot, that yeah, Slipknot that tour that came through. Yeah. yeah, so it's cool to just be like, oh, okay, this is the other heavy show that's happening. And same thing, like, I'm out in Halifax, like, we haven't had really too many hardcore shows, uh, or at least, like, big ones. I know, like, Propaganda is, like, coming through. Yeah, this is probably the first big, big one we've had yeah, in, in a while. We've had a few local ones, and they were pretty pretty good and yeah, pretty so well. Yeah, the ticket sales and stuff have been great uh, as a result, so definitely can't complain. Now, you guys uh, are already had two shows in Winnipeg and in Vancouver. Out of those, who have been the most rowdiest, and who do you think is going to party harder, Calgary or Edmonton coming up? Ooh, hard to tell. I mean, the the I think the best response of any of the shows has been Saskatoon. The, that city always goes off. They have, like, such a good scene, and it just feels like everyone, like, really lets loose and, like, has a good time. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm going to call it that even like Calgary and Edmonton can't compete with Red Deer and how gnarly Red Deer is going to go <laughs> off. So my money's on Red Deer for the Alberta win. Awesome. Um, and I know you guys got some new, or you guys have some European shows coming up. Uh, I saw those were posted. Uh, yeah, we have one festival that we're doing in the summer and then um, in the UK. And then we're trying to just figure out the rest of the year right now. Yeah. It's just kind of basically how everything falls through, right? Yeah, you know, play yeah, it by yeah. ear for now. Yeah, exactly. Stay and local. For we're me. never ones to like make too many plans. Uh, I feel like having stuff like too far in advance is always just like, well, you know, everything's always changing, especially lately. But even just the way that we've always like kind of toured, we're just like, well, we'll see what comes up. So. Um, yeah, hopefully we can go over to Europe and do some more stuff. I'd love to get back to Australia. So, lots of world to cover. Oh, yeah, you guys got lots. I mean, you've done Bloodstock. Yeah, yeah, yeah we and definitely yeah. are lucky to, uh, we get invited to lots of rad festivals. So, hopefully next summer we can do a bunch of those. 
Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks again for your time, Liam. Um, and good luck, uh, you know, for the rest of the tour. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing, uh, raging with the party with you guys hard tonight. Hell yeah. Thanks for having me on the show, man.